My name is Peter Badness, and I'm looking into a few of the nation's top sports and how they each create a pathway of opportunity for the Olympics. This week, I'll be looking at sailing, an Olympic sport since the 1900 Paris Games. Throughout the next week, I'll be speaking to some of the young athletes that may have a chance to make it to the Olympics, and even some of the world-class sailors who are training for the 2020 Olympics. Sailing was first contested in an Olympic sport at the 1900 Paris Games. Since then, the classes of boats allowed to compete have continued to evolve to reflect the advances in boat design and technology. Equipment advances over the past 20 years have created a trend towards smaller and lighter boats, placing in the even greater demands on both the physical and mental capabilities of the sailors. Today, I'm travelling to meet the RYA's Junior South Zone Training Squad, who are training at Datchet Water, a few miles west of London. These young sailors have been hand-selected for this squad to develop their skills in multiple aspects of racing. After meeting some of the amazing young athletes at Datchet, it has really shown me what these young sailors are capable of. However, I want to find out what kind of effects the intensive training has on their lives, physically and mentally. So I'm travelling to Bucks New University Sports Science Labs to talk to Dr Fiona McCormack. I'm Dr. Fiona McCormack. I am the Principal Lecturer for Sport, Exercise and Wellbeing at Bucks New University. This is our um, performance, human performance laboratory where we work with athletes at all stages in their career to help them enhance and develop their performance. We use a number of different sport science techniques to help them develop and try to ensure that they are successful in whatever sport they work in. Uh, the laboratory contains elements of physiology, biomechanics and strength and conditioning. Since filming the young athletes at Datchet, I have been invited to talk to some of the sailors at the Thames Valley Junior Championship.
Hi, I'm Pat Colvin. I am one of the um, Op Optimist National Squad assistant coaches and I am also the Southwest Optimist Zone head coach. Um, I've been working with the class for about six years. Uh, so I went sailing um, through my dad. We came down to Burfield, he's been a member of Burfield for over 30 years now. Um, and I just had a go with the Oppie Club on an open day. Um, I was told that I could come back the next day um, and have a go. And 15 years later, I'm still here helping with the Oppie. So. The coolest thing I've ever done um, was get to go to the 420 Worlds in Argentina. Um, but I can't say that was the best because it was probably one of the hardest weeks of my life. Um, then the best achievement I've probably had was becoming 420 national champion in 2012. Um, and then coaching, uh, getting to take the Oppie Worlds team out to Thailand last year. It was pretty fun. Hello, my name is Edward Day. I'm 13 years old and I've been sailing for seven years. There isn't one thing I can put down on what I most like about sailing. I like everything about it. But the most thing is meeting new friends and having fun. The downside to sailing is not having enough wind and when it's really rainy and cold. My best moment was was when I was in regatta and I came first in my first event. So I'm Archibald and I'm 11 years old and I've been sailing for five years. My favourite thing about sailing is meeting new friends and uh, going to different clubs. The only downside is when there's no wind and we can't sail. My best ever moment of sailing was meeting a new friend. After seeing some intensive racing, I want to find out what happens once they move on. So I'm travelling down to the UK's Olympic Team Training Centre in Weymouth to speak to an Olympian training for the 2020 Olympics. James Taylor, I'm 470 sailor and part of the British sailing team. So I was quite lucky in the fact I was brought up in a family that sailed a lot. But in terms of the system now, you can usually you can find a way if you speak to the right people, fit that kind of thing. You speak to the right people, find the right kind of people to work with and the right groups to be with, you can actually find your way up really quickly. The only difficult thing about sailing in particular is the mud that like is known as an expensive sport but it's getting better and better in terms of the affordability and the amount of like, money within it just in case of actually keeping on going because there's a lot of times where you're like I could stop yeah am I really going to get there because it's a long you're racing against people that have been in the game for 20 years like the guys at the top that like, I'm having to race against have been doing it for 17 years and it's like am I ever going to get there but it's just slowly digging away so a bit of bit of determination and you uh, make your way up the ladder. Hi, so I'm Chris Taylor and I'm an athlete in the British sailing team uh, campaigning for the Olympic Games. Um, so I think sailing in the Olympics is quite unique. It's one of the only sports where, although there's 10 different disciplines, there's only one team in each discipline goes uh, to the Olympic Games, so we've got a squad of four teams that are trying to compete for one spot. So we spend a lot of time training together, but ultimately we're trying to compete against the guys that are training with as well. Which sailing is different to other sports, so you have you can have multiple people going. Um, and you've also got the balance of you've got to train and race, but outside of that we've got fundraising to do and all sorts of bits and pieces, and although we get lost through funding, there's still lots of stuff outside of just going training we have to deal with. I think to the young sailors it's very easy to get drawn into trying to just do kind of like their squad systems for the youth guys and the junior guys. I think making sure that you're actually enjoying what you're doing otherwise you're going to get to a certain point and not want to do it anymore. So I think just going out making sure you're having fun. You, there are people that kind of perform early on in their careers and some that take a bit longer to develop so I think always just make sure you're enjoying it whilst you do it. So after my Olympic career I'd like to move into the more professional world of sailing which is the time of living and going and sailing on bigger yachts and the American Cup would be a great thing to get to.
From the beginning of this documentary, I have learned that although the intensive training that the young athletes have to go through, it also gives them life skills and opportunities that very few have access to. I have also found that during their careers they will also make friendships and relationships that will stay with them for the rest of their lives.